Hello and welcome to the I3 lecture series hosted by the Masters in Digital Photography program at the School of Visual Arts. Uh, my name is Michael Foley and I'll be your host for this evening. It's my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Jeff Chen Ching Lao. Jeff was born in Taiwan in 1977 and immigrated to the U.S. in 1999 at the age of 22. There, he immediately took residence in Queens, New York, in close proximity to the 7 subway line, dubbed by the New York City Department of City Planning as the International Express. He earned an MFA from the School of Visual Arts and a BFA from Pratt Institute. Lau's renowned Habitat 7 series, for which he received critical acclaim, stemmed from his master's thesis at SVA. Taken over the course of two years, Lau depicted the ethnic diversity of the communities along the 7 subway line on its seven-mile route from Manhattan to Flushing. Lau has won the New York Times Magazine Capture the Times Photography Contest in 2005, and his work from that, uh, with his work from the Habitat 7 series. After this major debut, Lau extended his parameters to other areas that show the city as constantly changing organism. In 2012, Lau won the Emerging Icon in Photography Award from the George Eastman House. Over the years, he has transitioned from large format film to digital photography, perfecting his method of stitching together, together several exposures to create one continuous panoramic image that vividly reflects the photographer's observations that day. Lau's work has been featured in numerous solo and group exhibitions and can be found in the permanent collections of several institutions, such as the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston, the Queens Museum in New York, Brooklyn Museum, the J. Paul Getty Museum, the George Eastman House, and many others. His first monograph, Habitat 7, which I believe, do we have a copy of it? No, no, that's oh, out of print, yes. Okay, out of print, very popular yeah. book. Uh, but that book was published in 2008 by Nazarelli Press which also published his second monograph, Coney Island, in mm -hmm. 2013. In 2014, Aperture Foundation published his third monograph, Jeff Chen Sing Lao, New York, mm -hmm. encompassing his work in New York for the past 10 years. In 2017, Nazarelli published 24 Solar Terms, Central Park, which, by the way, was exhibited with me at Foley Gallery. So, without further ado, welcome Jeff Chen Sing Lao. Hi, good evening. Okay, yes. Uh, today I'm probably going to introduce myself as another New York City photographer. Does that make sense to you guys? There are too many New York City photographers in the history of photography. So in order to, to create something different, so uh, I now I'm, I'm going to show you how I become who, who am I today. Okay. So um, this is my thesis project, as Michael just mentioned. It's called Habitat Seven. Habitat is Queens. Seven is Number Seven Subway. So the basic idea, Number Seven is the, is like a river to me, and this is how majority of civilization created. And all the immigrants who settled down around this river is very similar how 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 the society uh, society function. And uh, uh, this project uh, took me two two years in school and another two years to finish it completely. And uh, at the time um, when I w okay, let me calm down. Okay. Uh, uh, when I graduated from Pratt, I was using 8x10 camera. So everything here was uh, stitched with 8x10 film. Do you, you guys are too young to know about large format photography, right? You know, okay. So, um, so here was uh, usually two or three panel of 8x10 vertical or horizontally joined together. So. And uh, the reason why I do it this way, because uh, when I was a student like you guys, Lois Connor, a really famous photographer, she just finished her uh, China book. 
took her 13 years with a 7 by 17 inch camera, which is extra large format, to shoot China for 13 years. And her body of work just impre so impressed to me. And uh, w at the time, I was shooting 8 by 10. I was thinking, how can I do something panorama? So stitching just became my, my way to uh, answer her back. And the, my, uh, most, during my student year, I uh, shoot 8 by 10, drum scan everything, then put everything together in Photoshop. This is how I work. And uh, also, uh, fortunately enough, that I was study under Andrew Moore and uh, Mitch Epstein. So these two are like uh, contemporary photography, large format. American photographer like uh, up there. So uh, I was uh, really lucky to do, ha had a chance to study on the lamp. And uh, so this uh, body of work, uh, when I was a student, oh, there's a, so many stories to tell. I should tell you, uh, when I was a student, I didn't have enough money to buy 8x10 film. So I usually go to photo care and ask, do you have expired? 8 by 10 film that I can buy, usually like a half price. And the color won't be as accurate as the, the flash one. But uh, when you drum scan them and uh, color correct in Photoshop, everything become possible. So I work around it and uh, to, achieve, uh, to ch achieve the quality I want to achieve. So, And uh, this body of work, uh, I would usually just went out to uh, different community around number seven. So I would shoot there and uh, do a lot of scouting. So usually when I scout, I usually eat the local food to figure out what I want to shoot next. And the way that I work is like a social study. You go to a neighborhood, you talk to the local people and you feel the air, you, you feel what, what's going on there and then you pick your point of view and you make the shot and I only make one picture a day. And that picture a day usually takes two weeks of scouting and everything and uh, also you need to get access of someone's shot and uh, their roof and to shoot. So that's just a lot of planning before you shoot. Okay. And uh, here I also want to uh, show you guys because work with 8x10, that take a, a little bit longer. This picture took me about three hours to shoot from left to right. But when you look at my lighting, it's not coherent. That kind of make my image more interesting in a way. And uh, I also um, want to mention that, uh, Michael Foley just mentioned, uh, New York Times uh, gave me this award and that uh, published six pages of my work. And that basically became the foundation of my career. Yeah. And at the same time, uh, after I received the New York Times Award, uh, Queen's Museum gave me the first solo show. And uh, so this body of work was made into a light box. And around 30 of them surrounding the museum in the New York City panorama room. Yeah. And the, the larger size of the light box is 40 by 96 inch. So, and the, the smaller one was 20 by 48 inch. Yeah. And this body of work also make to the uh, Getty Museum. And uh, I had a three person show with Casey OP and me and uh, So Kim, yeah. And uh, here is the animate shot of my show. So w when I was younger, I didn't anticipate <laughs> to document my show well, but, but now when you dig into the archive, you figure out, yeah, I should be w more well prepared. Yeah, and here's the, how Getty, they, when, when I had a show, and they make the map and to show you each location where I make the shot and in the final, yes. 
here is the next project is called Dazzle Fuel. So it's not spelling error. So you see that fuel is like a stadium. I'm talking about two stadiums. So my project was to photograph the very last year of Shea Stadium and also the whole construction of City Field and later on the demolition of Shea and uh, opening day of City Field. And uh, I would just recently talked to Queen's Museum to do a show with them because uh, the City Field's uh, 20 year anniversary is upcoming. So I'm trying to get back there and to show again yeah and here is a shot that uh, that's a shade stadium so a lot of New Yorker like my age we probably grew up with shade stadium but youngster they probably <laughs> never <laughs> yeah and in front of shade there's the construction site of city field so the next picture I'm going to show you I was shooting this and uh, every six months the same angle and, and different type of day and different weather to show you guys the, the later on the city field grow from the ground. Yeah. And uh, during this time, I'm still shooting 8x10 with a really long lens, shooting from flush and all the way. Yeah. And also interesting to do this project because when New York City got a new city government decided to have the new stadium, which means it's going to change the landmark of New York City. And they're going to destroy one and build another one. And that, to me, is just a witness of a cycle, a, a circle of life of stadium. It's just so interesting to me, yeah. And during the project, uh, they gave me the access of the, the season pass, actually. So I can go anywhere to photograph. And uh, this was, uh, there are like 15,000 people in this picture. And I was shooting from the press box, reverse. Usually photographer shooting the player, I was like reverse shooting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So for a lot of New Yorker, this is the memory. And uh, it's gone. And uh, hopefully, hopefully the show will. <laughs> and during the time, uh, this was the very last concert at Shea Stadium, which was uh, Billy Joe's concert. Yeah. And uh, from my memory, if that served me correctly, this was the very first image I shot with digital camera. Because uh, during the concert, they only give you 15 million in one spot to shoot. With the 8x10, wasn't possible. And uh, I I rent a Hasselblad camera and shoot this in 15 minutes. Yeah. So I also uh, spent two years in construction site and shooting the whole structure. If you guys look closely, there's an orange square in the middle. So all the baseball people are so superstitious. They don't allow people to touch their home base if you <laughs> look good. And this project, I uh, kind of ended at the opening day of uh, City Fuel. And uh, now I'm trying to get back there. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, all my work are composite. So the next uh, slide, I'm going to show you the video, uh, which was created by Wall Street Journal to show you guys uh, how I make my work uh, normally.
Yeah, also I want to mention the, the concept behind my work to do in stitching. There are two major reasons. One is the, the print quality, of course. And the second one is when you, when you do stitching, you show your picture in different sections. Different section, which means you can pick and choose the moment you want to be put in in your final work or not. So and the different lighting. So later on, I will show you more example how I mix with the lighting from different times of day and uh, from day to night and join. Yeah. And here was an exhibition I did with uh, MTA for transit. Uh, it, actually, this was under Bryant Park, which I remember. Yeah. So uh, during my stadium years, I was uh, also commissioned by uh, Bronx Museum to photograph Grand Concourse and to, in order to celebrate the 100-year anniversary, 2009. And here was, uh, I think, a, a great takeoff of my career because uh, CODA actually sponsored me the all the film at the time. And so I was just shoot as much as I can, shoot as many as I can. And here was uh, one of the fish building, historical building in Bronx. And I also love to tell the small story of, of Coda because Tom used to work there. And I, when, when Coda asked me, Jeff, so how much film do you need? I said maybe 120 bucks a year. So which is 10 sheep per box, so that's 12,000 feet. And when, when the film came, it's like 120 case. I was like, holy shit. So I have to, I have to buy a refrigerator to, to put everything. <laughs> that, that was a story, yes. OK. And here is the example that uh, when, when I go out to shoot, I usually carry like a 20 film holder, which means you have 40 shots. And uh, it's a mix of lighting. So you, uh, all the trees from the right hand side in the park was shot in the afternoon. And in the middle, there's a fountain with a sunset. And later on, at nighttime. So you, I kind of blend all different lighting and deep, different movement. You also see the car's trail light and people standing still. It's just uh, not usual. Yeah. And I also would love to tell a story uh, why I uh, expand my photography this way. Most of my work look like documentary, but when I was uh, doing my internship at Magnum, I went through all famous photographers' contacts and figured out how they work. Then I figured out that I couldn't be better. You know, they, they are doing so well with the way they do the documentary photography, the photojournalist type of work. So I gave up. And uh, when I received this New York Times uh, award, and my friend, photographer from Magnum, they, they said, Jeff, we are talking about your work. I said, do I, do I get a chance to get in? I said, no, never. Because I manipulate my work, so it does not allow. But actually, that door closed, which means my fine art photography door open. You can do whatever you need to do to achieve the image you like to have. So it's good thing, bad thing, but yeah, that happened. And the next picture here I will show you guys. Uh, when you do a project, when the idea is simple, usually it's very complicated to make. So when a conceptual artist want do a very complicated idea, and usually their visual is so simple. So here's the, I, it's the example, the idea is so simple. I was commissioned to do Grand Concourse. I said, why don't I just photograph every single building on, on this avenue? And here's 80 block of the building. And this took me three months in front of the computer, like 10 hours a day, and do them together. And uh, when we were showing this in Bronx Museum, it was like uh, one, one foot to 220 feet. So it's a really long piece. And uh, 
were interesting was uh, all the residents from Bronx. They, ca they came in to the show and they looked for their building. That's, that's great. Yeah. And uh, here is uh, my uh, Yankee Stadium picture to show you the scale of the print. The print was 120 inch by 180 inch. Yes. Yeah. And the next project here is uh, actually my summer project 2010. And uh, half a project was shoot with film and half a project was shoot with digital. And I, I usually make this Star Wars joke, like I turn to the dark side. Yeah. So I switch to digital in the middle of this project. And, and also because the medium format digital bag was good enough for me to create an image like this. So yeah, that happened. And during the time, um, uh, Coney Island was just starting their, its uh, renovation. So I was really lucky to capture the, the historical moment in Coney Island. And in this project, I kind of reveal my skill more. I make uh, my color pop. And uh, I think it's also because of an artist that when you met your wife and things change, no, the, the case. And here is also the, the picture I was shot with a medium format digital camera. This was, uh, I always, always love to shoot the magic moment. So this was right before sunset, yeah. yeah. You know, I love to have people ask me questions in the middle of lecture. <laughs> but I, I was told it's not allowed, but yeah. But, but here, <laughs> not, not sure. Yeah, I know, I know, okay, cool. So he, here's an uh, example that, uh, I, over the year, I always love to tell uh, younger, younger generation that when you go out to shoot, bring a bigger camera because it slows you down. And it actually makes you think before you shoot. And that's, you plan everything. And with a big camera, you, you uh, calculate everything before you shoot and uh, that make a better photographer. Yeah, here is a very last uh, film uh, camera that I ever used. I was using 8x10 with a 1200 lens, and it was really windy. And yeah, then after this, I switch back. I switch to digital. Yeah, and this project also made to uh, the MTA R4 Transit uh, light box in Atlantic Avenue. So uh, here. 2012, uh, I was really fortunate enough to offer a book deal by Aperture. And they said, Jeff, we want to publish your New York picture. But I say, I haven't shoot anything in Manhattan. So can you wait for me for two years? And they actually did. This, this is so rare. But so uh, 2012 to 2014, I spent so much time just focusing Manhattan and So as a, another New York City photographer, actually there are so many objects in New York City. There's, it's so interesting. If you that fit your vision, you should always shoot on the street. And yeah. So we are like a halfway of my lecture. You guys probably already figured out Jeff Leo is like a large format documentary street photography plus digital. So that's my formula. So just let you guys know. So in this period of time, I also keep challenging or push the limit of traditional photography and the optical photography. So I use the long lens to create wide angle look and with really big aperture. So every single person on the street, I would shoot them individually. 
and put together later on. So I can pick and choose whose face I want to be appear there and there. And uh, with the bouquet of certain lens that I love. So. Here is another example that uh, I spent the whole day just shoot one picture. So all the trees you see with the sunset was shot in the afternoon. And uh, later on, after sun came down, I shoot all the white roof. Then later on, when people came home, they switch on their light, and I shoot them. Normal uh, nighttime picture, you usually will see the pitch black darkness. But for me, it's, it just uh, create everything beforehand and put together later on. And here is the picture of my Edward Harper. So, so it, um, a lot of New Yorkers are very lonely, including I, we. We all have this moment. I'm pretty sure. And uh, when I see this, I just have to make it. Yeah. And 2014, I also was really extremely lucky to have a show with the Museum Museum of City of New York. And uh, also at the time, the aperture book just came out at the same time. And uh, we had uh, 45 prints in the show. And the largest one was 60 by 200 inch. And the one in the middle, the image size is 60 by 120 inch. So, yeah. And here is also an example of uh, shooting on location. And I, I want to expect to shoot to create something like this. Parade was usually happened around 8 a.m. or 7 a.m. I was there around 5 a.m. And I, would, I got a really good spot on the street corner. But the police keep pushing me back because I was shooting with a tripod. And tripod usually, eh. so I would keep pushing back until I was against a fire truck, and I would really know where to go. So okay, let me just do this, and I shot this with like eighty different frame and put together. And uh, interesting enough was when you guys look at the shadow of the imagery, they are all in different direction. Yeah, so that two three hours sun just move from left to right. So, yeah. and that's made my uh, imagery look more energetic yeah, in a way. And here is an example that I was shooting from 7 in the morning until 8 at night time. So from the left hand side, that's in the morning, and right hand side, night time. So you see so many boats. And they all happened, but not at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Are they in the same boat? No, they, they, they all happened there, but just different time of day. Different, different yeah. Different. yeah, they're all different, yes. Yeah. And here, here is also an example. Uh, I was commissioned by Deutsche Bank to do uh, some work on top of their building. And this was a result that uh, I call these three bridges. So you got Brooklyn, Manhattan, and uh, Williamsburg in the back. And, oh, oh. and also uh, 2015, I was also represent uh, Deutsche Bank in Freeze uh, Art Fair launch. And uh, the work is uh, 60 by 100 inch there, yeah, each print. So right now we're going to talk about my recent exhibition. Very exciting. I had my first show with uh, Michael's gallery, Foley Gallery A. Mm -hmm. And uh, here is a project called 24 Solar Term. And this is a Chinese calendar. According to Chinese calendar, this calendar tell you or tell farmer when to seed your, your and uh, when the weather going to change and you're going to, uh, it's like a micro season. Come. So every two weeks, 
there's a term. So I followed this calendar and went to Central Park. So every two weeks I create an image. Every two weeks I create an image. So it ends up with the spring and summer. And everything shot vertically because, uh, yeah, I should also talk about this. Because I'm originally from Taiwan and uh, I was educated in Chinese art that uh, things, uh, all the paintings supposed to be multiple perspective instead of Western perspective. So which means everything was shot in different point of view and put together later on. And I should go back this one. So in this picture, from bottom to up, is already over 180 degree. So yeah, we, so when you are standing there, your head have to turn go back together. So with uh, digital photography, I kind of compress that view into our perspective. Yeah. So okay, let me jump back. This. I also have brought a book here, so if you guys have interest, take, take a look. Yeah. And here's the installation view that I, we, we had a show. And uh, the large one is 60 by 100, and smaller one is 40 by 66. And I had everything. Uh, when you look at my show from past, except the light box, everything was printed in my own studio. So, yeah. And my, Studio is like in the block of, do you guys know Le Mans in Long Island City? So everything I print, I just bring it to Le Mans to mounting and framing. Yeah. And also over the year, I was uh, hired by a uh, different magazine. Normally just New York magazine, New Yorker, and New York Times. So, and they ha this was a, a portfolio I did for New York magazine and they hired me to photograph the small island in Five Borough, yeah. And this was also the first time I used drone and to create a project. Yeah. And here's my Liberty Island. And here's the, the cover. So uh, we almost finished, but I'm going to show you uh, my the other body of work that I've been working on. Uh, I've been photographing all the festival in from Taiwan, and uh, this was one of it, and. Uh, the, the concept behind it, because when I came out uh, to United States, to Canada to study, I missed a lot of festival from Taiwan. And now I'm older enough, when I go back, I had this excuse to, to show part of memory that never been in my life. And uh, to photographing in Asia is totally different animal. It's, when I was shooting this, there were 2,000 photographers next to you. And you would all try to get a shot, yeah. And I'm still stitching, so interesting enough. <laughs> and uh, this body of work uh, went to the, uh, it's called Taiwan Biennial 2020, which I had no chance to go back to participate. But uh, all the, the whole production was go through FaceTime, and uh, it's such an experience because of the pandemic. And the light box was uh, two meter by four point eight meter. So here, and next one is the installation shot that outside the museum. So yeah, this is the very uh, the last image I prepared today, and uh, good. Yeah, good, <laughs> good. Thank you. When you convert, when you started shooting digital, mm -hmm. you went to two and a quarter. Are you still shooting with a t medium format digital? I'm shooting phase one now. Phase one. Yeah, but oh. uh, 
stitching up to eight by ten inch. Is that on a on a four by five back or eight by ten? Uh, it's on, on a uh, yeah, yes and no, but I would also modify my own camera to achieve. Yeah. So. Okay, so you can ri rise and yes, rise and fall. If you need rise, yeah. The all the pictures that you were doing once you converted to the so-called medium format. Yes. Uh -huh. It's in the same technique hmm. that you were doing with the eight by ten. Basically, not exactly, but just smaller portion. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So that you actually, I've, I've, I'm amazed by what you were able to do Thank with you. film on on that level. It's just outstanding. Thank you. I can't imagine how many hours you must have spent on a computer putting those images together, like the people lined up in Times Square and Forty Second Street. It's uh. Just a few hours of shooting with a couple dozen of frame, and you pick and choose what you like. And how many from. hours of editing? You know, my, my previous gallery, actually, she, she asked me, said, Jeff, get a life. I said, <laughs> what, what, what I do is uh, I, I just spend all my time in photography doing things. That's before I got married. So, But now it's different. OK. And uh, um, usually was. Uh, 10 to 12 hours in front of the computer, and I work one image for two weeks. Then once I finish that one, I go out to shoot another one and do that. And uh, right after I graduated from SBA, the MFA, I had a part-time job. So that was really crazy time. 9 a.m., you need to go to work, and you come home as a retoucher, 6, 6 p.m. Then you take break two hours and you work until 3 a.m. in front of the computer for almost two years mm. until I, uh, my galleries sold another print, so I become a full-time artist. And that's, I think, I think all, every single artist needs to go through that to pay you a debt and before things get better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, so I found that um, a lot of your work is um, shown with light boxes. Could yes. you talk a little bit about how you decided, like, how you want your work to be displayed? Yes. Um, original, my first solo show at Quincy Museum was showing light box because that environment has no lighting. So we. I spent time to study how to make light box. Then once you learn, you have those knowledge, later on when people want to do light box, you just keep doing that. And for me, um, when, when you look at the print and when you look at the monitor, in the monitor, the light is from behind, which m make the imagery more saturated. And the print is from, it's different. So when you want to catch people's eye more, you use light box. And that's very similar to how advertisement been doing. So that, does that answer your question? Yeah, because when you want to show something in a room has no lighting to show your work, so you have to figure out how to make your work pop in a way. Yeah. Did you use tripod for every image, or I, did you I, shoot I, anyone yes. without tripod? And sometimes I use three cameras. Three cameras? Yeah, you, on the you can have one camera just shoot for background, everything. And you can handheld one. You can have one with a long lens. Mm. So it's just, uh, yeah, if you want to <laughs> create an image, because every time when, when you finish your image, you want to create the next one, you will keep thinking, how can I make the last image better? So you keep sharpening your skill. So always there's a tripod with uh, the device I put together, so you can do stitching. And every single angle, you can come back and shoot again, and shoot again, different times of the day. So all your alignment will be nicely square. and. Uh, Um, 
You mentioned, you know, kind of in the beginning of your journey that there's obviously plenty of other photographers that have mastered mm -hmm. specific skills and yes. you kind of delved into skit stitching, it seems like, as yours. So I was curious just for, you know, new photographers who are also trying to make their mm -hmm. own imp mm -hmm. impression in the field. Um, if you think of other uh, skill sets or styles mm -hmm. that maybe aren't really as uh, popularized mm -hmm. or used as often. I, I think the, the first of all, a younger photographer, you should try to make an image. People can stare at it for a long time. And how do you make that? I, I learned from Andrew Moore and Mitch Epstein. They, uh, okay, let, let me, uh, w when I had a sh uh, critique with Mitch Epstein, he always tell us when a chair in a room, is that angle put it there is right, is correct. You don't need to change it. So you need to figure out a way to let people see your work is uh, there. And I think right now because uh, Instagram, Facebook, everything pops, iPhone everywhere. And uh, we go through the imageries information too much and too fast. But how do you make uh, people stay and look at image, your image longer? So, so that's, that's, that probably answer your question. But once you figure that out, the technique is just so easy. I also want to tell the story. When I was a student and Katrine Eisman was teaching in my department and I couldn't get her class and I was so pissed. And I only sit in her class, like one class. She was teaching masking and I've been using it since. So, so technique thing is once you know your vision and you know how to achieve it, then that's things easy. But to figure out that vision take a while. Yeah. Good. Uh, additional questions for Jeff? I have one question. Cool. If I could ask <laughs> that question. Um, first of all, I want to say Jeff and I have known each other for a very long time, over 20 years, actually. We yeah, met. when I was an uh, undergrad. Yep, we met. 2000, uh, yeah, 2000. Yeah, like 2000, I Two, think. 22 years. Yep, yeah, he came into a gallery I was working at, and he was I fascinated was by this <laughs> color photographer, and he talked forever and ever about it, and I know that I, I was like, this guy's going to go somewhere, and then 17 <laughs> years later, we did a show together. Yes. My mm -hmm. question is this, and in regards to the show that, um, that I did with you, mm -hmm. the 24 solar terms. Yes. Very different. Uh-huh. Not only, it has nothing to do with, well, it has something to do with New York, of course, Central Park, but it's so abstract, mm -hmm. it's vertical. Yes. Um, and there's, it seems um, like a little more casual. Mm. Everything else seems very, very, very uh, idiosyncratic with the mm. way things are placed and everything. And so many of the photographs in the, and they're black and white, that's the other yes, thing that's huh? a big change. Um, feel like breezy. They just feel mm -hmm. like a little um, easier in mm -hmm. some ways. And I, I'm just mm -hmm. wondering what inspired you to kind of make that switch. Yes. Uh, before I had the show with you and uh, before after book, in my career I tried to prove that I'm here. I, I arrived in New York City. And, I, and uh, then that book happened, the show happened, I feel like uh, my New York story, I can put it aside. So I should tell everyone here, usually when the artist, their first body of work or second, usually is your own story you try to create. Then after the third one, is you have to get the information or the inspiration from other place. And after I prove to the people that I'm good enough to be here, then I do my own personal project. Mm. So, th which is m much more Chinese to me. And uh, in order to create the look, the Chinese look in Central Park, that's kind of a good challenge for me at the time. So, so that happened. And this 
I don't need to really care about other pressure. So, and I, I feel comfortable that you, lo you love the project. I remember that was great and uh, we did well with the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it, was, it, was, uh, it was a great show. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was a great show. Um, additional questions for Jeff? Good. Okay, so uh, Jeff, thank you so much for no, coming thank you here. Having, to have thank you. Thank you.